All righty. Right. Okay. So I'll just start off while we're waiting for the next couple of people to join, possibly, uh, to introduce Kathy Denrosh. Um, it's a great pleasure to have you uh, giving this little talk today. Um, just a little bit of history. Kathy and I go back many, many years. I think <laughs> you first visited me when I was uh, still a fairly new, brand new travel agency. It was about 23 years ago or something. And in those days you were with Crystal. Yes. And then made the big jump across to Oceana when they were launched. And uh, what a great concept that they put together with Oceana being that smaller size ship with the emphasis on food. Because so many people who book with me, food is a very important thing. Yep. When you go to a foreign city or a foreign land, you really want to experience the local food and and the real stuff, you know, and that's that's what you get. I always remember the one story when Oceana first started and we went to the opening presentations that um, because the guys who started it were foodies, I think there were 15 different types of olive oil you could choose in the restaurant. And I love olive oil. So that was- Oh, me too, uh, Leslie. In my oh, mind, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It just really makes a meal. Um, so these are interesting times for us in the travel industry. Um, obviously, a lot of people are not traveling at the agency. Ourselves, we're spending a lot of time rescheduling, rebooking, um, getting people organized for next year. But the cruise industry, despite anything you might have read, is extremely confident. I know all of my reps have been in touch with me from the different cruise lines. It is a deep industry and it's deep in the sense of emotional contact as well, because it's all about the sea. And the sea has always been our starting point for exploration and discovery. And that is never, ever going to go away. So with the new protocols in place, I know that everybody will feel very confident about cruising next year. We just need that travel advisory to be not lifted, lifted. changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn this over to Kathy, who is going to walk us through Oceana and get to know a little bit more about what makes them unique and special. Thank you so much, Leslie. I'm just going to share my screen. And Leslie, if you wouldn't mind just telling me um, when you can see that, that would just be okay. great. So this takes two seconds okay, so here. Starting and yes, I can see the top part. Right. The, oh, here. Okay, let's okay. move this up here. There we go. Let's do from slideshow from That's the it. beginning. There you go. Can you see the full screen? Wonderful. Yes, I can. Perfect. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. And I'm Kathy Danroach. As Leslie said, we've known each other a long time, but actually I go back almost 44 years in the industry. I started with uh, the Love Boat way back in 1974 when cruising was actually truly a small ship experience to begin with. But I wanted to say a little bit more about what Leslie was talking about, because it's very true. We're all dying to travel again and get back on, you know, our kind of dream adventures. But just so you know, when I look back at all the years I've been in the industry and how the industry has impacted uh, guests as they travel around the world, this is the second largest industry in the world. It employs almost 20% of the world's population, the travel industry. And while we kind of look and say, well, gee, you know, will I travel again? Is it, I want to go, there's a 30% of us that say, I want to go right now. 30% of us are kind of going, I'll wait till there's a vaccine of some time. And, you know, 30% of us will say, I'm never going to travel again or leave Canada again. The fact is, is that the pendulum will always swing back. This is a business that the world can't live without. In fact, the world can't operate with it without people traveling in it. So while we're seeing tiny snippets of, traveling coming back in and cruising specifically coming back into the market very slowly we are seeing a really big pent-up demand the interesting thing is is that last year 30 million people traveled on a cruise ship of some wow. sort in the world 30 million people it's hard to believe when you look at the cruise industry, because it's still a small segment of the entire travel industry, but it's worth billions and billions of dollars. 
but 30, bill, 30 million people traveled on cruise ships. 3,000 were affected by COVID. Um, and over the, the kind of the end towards this last spring and 73 unfortunately passed away. So when you look at the numbers on cruise ships, there's only, there's, this is what I really want to tell you before I tell you a little bit about Oceana because it'll make a bit more sense. There's only three entities that have to report to the CDC. That's the Center of Disease Control. And those are hospitals, care centers, like long-term care centers, and cruise ships. And for over 40 years, cruise ships have been reporting to the CDC about viruses and um, any kind of uh, viral infections on board their ships. Resorts, airlines, hotels, escalators, elevators, BC ferries, anything you look at, none of those uh, entities have to report to the CDC. So it's easy to target a ship because what you see is a certain amount of people on a certain amount of space for a certain amount of time. And that's why cruise ships have been the focal point for a lot of people. But when you look at the numbers affected, over 30 million people and 3,000 people were infected, um, it's 0.001% of the entire cruise industry that was affected. So I want you to feel confident that cruising is alive, cruising is safe. And now as CDC starts to look further, and we've got these incredible panels of, um, as Oceana, we've joined together with the Royal Caribbean family and the NCLH family, and we've got 12 panelists right now um, from all over the world, whether it's CDC or health or, or you know, everything. Um, really studying how ships can be better. So there's going to be some things I'm going to share with you that we're doing to make you feel very, very safe at sea. And while the CDC says this is what each cruise ship will have to have before they can sail, I can guarantee you when we all start sailing, sailing again, and we don't know quite when that'll be, it'll be almost 150% of what the CDC has required us to do. So we want to make sure that everybody's feeling very safe. Well, 11 years ago, I started with Oceana. I had been at Crystal Cruises for 18 years before that. And as I said, long ago at the Love Boat. So I've worked for four really beautiful cruise lines in my life. And when I came to Oceana, it was because these were smaller ships. And I was used to selling smaller ships for many, many years. I've always been in that luxury end of the business. But what I loved about Oceana, they were doing things that were very different in the industry when they started in 2003. And even back then, there was, you know, the economy was lousy. It had just been after, you know, 2001 and 9-11. It had been, you know, there were a lot of cruise ships already in the market. But Oceana felt when they came in, if they got things right and they could do things that other ships weren't doing, making things that that were more inclusive than the big premium lines, but not quite as inclusive as the six star luxury lines, then they would have a kind of a niche that they could start. So actually, incredibly enough, we started with what we called the upper premium market. And it drew records of travelers coming into Oceana because I wanna tell you what the three things that we make up in this business as the core pillars of our existence. And that is number one, we started out with three very, very small ships. I'm gonna show you what those look like. But the fact is, is that when you think about a small ship, you don't think about lineups, you don't think about crowds, you think about intimacy, more inclusive, all the kinds of things, getting into ports that the big ships can't get into. That was a big kind of thing. And then of course we added in being the destinations, destination specialists. These, we were immersing ourselves in some of the most unique adventurous itineraries that anyone had ever seen on cruise ships. And obviously we said, we want something to really stand out and be different. And as Les started to talk about at the very beginning, this was about our cuisine. Now I have, we've all traveled all over the world, I'm sure on this, um, all the participants on this call, and we always love food wherever we go. But I'll tell you one thing about holidays is that when you go on a holiday and your food isn't as great, it's the one thing that'll stick out more than anything else. That a food will break or, or make a holiday at any given time. It's not the reason you ever buy travel, but it's the reason, one of the reasons that when you come away from a great vacation, you go, oh my goodness, the food was amazing. So at Oceana, it was our third core pillar. We said, 
it's not going to be the reason people come to Oceana, but it's going to be the second time they come to Oceana is mostly going to be because of the food being the best you can get. And it's not just because it's gourmet or a luxury cruise line. It was the choices, and I'm going to tell you about that. So these three core pillars of ours were the things that made Oceana stand out at the very beginning of our existence in, in 2003. When we talk about small ship luxury, this is what our ships look like. When we started out with three ships and now we have six in our fleet, the, if we have four little ships of 30,000 tons. Now that doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but if you look at the top end of this picture with some of the biggest ships in the world, three of our ships could easily fit onto uh, one of those ships. So it didn't mean it was better or worse because I love premium and, and the contemporary markets as well. I love all sorts of, of, of cruise lines because I've been in the industry for so long. I appreciate them all. And we're also different from each other. But I think the one thing I love about small ships is that the amount of detail to the service you receive on each ship is what really makes me kind of go, wow, I want to go back on that cruise line. They remembered my name. They remembered the drink I had from the first moment I sat down. And without being in your face, they're subtly just, they know who you are as a guest. And it's incredible incredible experience. Plus you're on and off the ships in 20 minutes when you arrive in port. There's no lines, there's no crowds, and we were going to do things differently. Well, when I left Crystal, I came to Oceana because they were building two other ships called the Marina and the Riviera, twice the size. That's the second bottom picture there. The Marina and Riviera were twice the size of our little ships, but still considered incredibly small within the industry. So two of these ships could fit into any normal size premium market ship. You see our friends at Princess and Holland America and Celebrity, those kind of things. Those were the size we compared to. So it meant that we could get into ports that the other ships couldn't go into. And so when we talk about our regatta class, this is our tiny, beautiful ships of 30,000 tons. We pull into a port last year um, when the ships were coming into Vancouver, uh, I was over in Victoria, actually, and I was showing off our little regatta who came into Victoria to do Alaska. And right beside us was one of the Royal Caribbean ships, one of the Holland America ships, and I love all of them. But I have to say, we were, we were like this tiny little entity in the middle. We were like a little marshmallow in the, in the <laughs> middle of it. And it was so beautiful to see because... I think right now what people are looking at is what is it about small ships that really makes a difference? And I think the fact is it's the attention to detail, but it's also the size of the ship always makes you feel like you're in someone's home. And I love that. We even have fireplaces on our ship. Um, they don't work, but they're absolutely beautiful. And you can walk into these into the library, into some of our uh, baristas lounge and things like that, our little bistro, and there's a big fireplace there. And you just walk yourself down in front of the library or read a book or whatever with your feet up on an ottoman and you do feel like you're in someone's home so it's beautiful and the ships are so beautifully done they were all refurbished this last year so we hold 684 guests and yes on that ship for every one and a half guests everybody there's someone looking at you so the size of the ship was really amazing and when we built the marina in riviera we said we're going to have 1200 guests on board we're going to kind of double the size of the stateroom but it's going to be absolutely stunning and so everything is amazing now the reason i show you this picture of the pool is because even though it's empty right now and it's always kind of the marketing side of companies that show their, their size with no people walking on board the ship when I say there's no lineups or crowds, everyone, it means that there are no lineups or crowds. You never have to worry about putting your book down on a chaise lounge or anything to reserve your spot because there's so much room on the ship for so few guests that it's wonderful. And yet the ship feels beautifully kind of paced. So when we start to enter the waters this next year and we start to look at what we've got, we'll probably start out at half full and just like some of the other cruise lines have started. And we'll probably start at about half full and we'll see how it goes. But the fact is, even when this ship is full, it feels beautifully spaced out with, between guests. And as I said, even if you're going into a restaurant or anything like that, it's um, there's no lines, there's no crowds to do anything like that. It's wonderful. So it's a real residential feeling. In fact, the whole ship, every single one of them has almost $7 million of artwork on board. And it's absolutely amazing. This is the only time 
that on Oceana, you can actually use one of those little audio box tours and you can go around and see some of the most original art. So we have uh, original Picassos and Monets and things like that. And it's an art tour. It's a little walking museum. So beautiful. Everything that we have on board the ship, we designed, we actually picked ourselves. Our president and our CEO went all over the world looking for original art. And we actually have books on the actual original artwork of Oceana. See, the thing is, what we said is we want to be this small cruise line that is entering the six-star luxury. We're not going to include as much as having it go right to the hilt of having all your liquor, having all your shore excursions, having all your food to everything included. We said we only wanted a little bit more inclusive and not as inclusive as the six star lines. But the fact is what we did that was so different is we said, we're going to take away certain things. We're not going to have a kid's program. We're not going to have art auctions on our board, our ship. We're going to include all of dining, no matter where you are on the ship, we're not going to charge our guests for dining on in our specialty restaurants. We're not going to, um, you know, have announcements on board the ship. So we're very careful of how and when we announce on board our ship. We're not going to do some of the things that most of the big cruise lines do. And that was, number one, we're not going to charge for shuttle service in and out of each of the cities. So that's going to be included in the thing. We're going to include air with all of our, our, our cruising. So when you come out of Calgary for a $250 charge, we're going to fly you to Venice and home from Rome, or we're going to fly you from Dubai home from Cape Town or whatever uh, sailing that you want. And we're going to be totally immersive in our destinations. And we're going to offer some of the world's finest cuisine. So we did a lot of things that were different. And as I said at the beginning, everybody started coming around saying, we want to do this. So we have some of the most incredible cuisine on our ship. And part of it is due to this gentleman on the right hand screen, which is Jacques Papin. You know him. He was Charles de Gaulle's uh, head chef for many, many years. He's worked for three other French heads of state and been their personal chef. He's been with Oceana since the beginning and his whole, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, speculum on the whole entire cruise part of Oceana is the fact that he wants to be able to have people share um, he wants to be able to have the freshest food available and he wants to have more choice than anybody else in the industry. And so we've become the cruise line for foodies. That's our official stance. And so everything you order, it's called Ella Minute. So it means that if Leslie was on board right now and she wanted a piece of halibut um, when she was in Alaskan waters, uh, it makes me want to cruise right now, is that that would be cooked to her exact liking at the moment she orders it. So it's nothing is pre-prepared. It's all done as fresh as you get. And it's absolutely amazing. So when it comes to the finest ingredients, it means that everything you see on board the ship is so incredibly beautiful. And we have six restaurants on board the ship that we don't charge you to dine in. So whether you want to go into the Terrace Cafe in your jeans and t-shirt and just have breakfast, lunch, or dinner up there, and it's all, you don't ever touch any spoon in, at Oceana, you've never been able to be in a buffet and touch someone else's spoon uh, to serve yourself. We have always served you, and that's one thing you'll see that's different from even big ships entering the water this next year is there won't be the typical buffet that you have been used to. Ocean has always held high, high standards of cleanliness and um, safety when it comes to that kind of stuff. So we always handle your food for you. You never, you can order anything you want, but we will serve it to you. So let's move to the travel experience because this is what I want to tell you about is when we really do curated travel uh, kind of experiences as people, you know, sift around the world. The only place we don't go to is the Antarctic. We go everywhere in the world and for short seasons. And we have cruises that are seven days up to 180 days around the world. And I have to tell you, there's very few seven day cruises most of the time to experience Oceana. You have to really, truly go 10, 12, 16, 18, 30, 45 days. And you'll see a lot of our guests who are on board for, you know, two or three sailings back to back as they sail around. And I have to say, if you've ever sailed over 14 days, you know how quickly 20 days go. Once you've sailed for 20 days, then you'll know how fast a 40-day cruise goes. And the reason we are so successful at our around-the-world cruises of 180 days is because our ports are intensive. So our itineraries are so beautiful and 180 days is nothing, <laughs> you know, in your life. It's fantastic. So 
we, I want to tell you some about the exquisite destinations we do, because as I said, we go everywhere and we do very unique kind of itineraries that are coveted in the industry today. So just recently, we did a big travel trend study with Condé Nast and also within our organization and said, what are we doing that's really right? Who was booking and what are they booking? And we found that the very top trends in coming into 21 and 2022 were those people who said, I want to go to the Mediterranean and I want to go to Northern Europe. Those are the two top selling destinations we have right now. The third top was the Caribbean. So those were the kind of middle 30% who said, well, I'll try something. Maybe it I'll try something in the Caribbean close to home. And we don't do a lot of Caribbean sailing, um, but we have a few. And the fourth was Asia. They want to go to Japan. And I think, Leslie, you were just doing, you just did Japan last year. It's such an amazing destination. And if you've, none of you have watched Monty Don's uh, Japanese garden tours on TV, I love this guy, but he does amazing tours of some of the most famous gardens in the world. And one of them happens to be a Japanese full kind of series of his um, uh, two episodes of what he's done through Japan. So amazing. So Japan, Southeast Asia, Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, you know, China, all sorts of places that we're doing that are, are really, really, really cool. Um, so that's our fourth. And of course, Grand Voyage is being anything from 30 days and beyond. Those are sailings that we might start in Dubai and come all the way down through, um, you know, Egypt or come down through uh, Africa and come all the way down to Cape Town or maybe Cape Town all the way to Singapore or things that we have done that are longer, longer voyages. So there's some really cool things. But our whole thought behind everything we're doing right now is saying kind of saying where have you gone and do you remember traveling because we all want to come back to it so what do we want to do next where are we going to go and I love this scene because this is something of the med that you know you just can never grab on to and I just love it so when I say you know here we go around the world one of the things I want to talk to you about is the Baltics we're going to start first and then the med quickly and then we're going to kind of wrap up because I could talk to you for hours about Oceania, but we want to <laughs> kind of keep this uh, a little bit uh, interesting and, and short. But when I talk about the Baltics and British Isles and Iceland, these are some of the most popular itineraries we have. And with Oceania, everybody, I will tell you, there are certain sailings we have that are kind of one-off sailings. So we might do one North Cape sailing of 18 days where the sun doesn't go down. We may do one kind of beautiful Icelander or, or, you know, Greenland cruise. And so when you see a small ship itinerary that you like, that's the time that you need to book it. And you can always change it and do everything else. I'm going to tell you about our travel assurance program after this. But the fact is, is that some of these itineraries that I'm going to show you are so exquisite. And there's some of our biggest kind of popular itineraries. Iceland and Leslie and her entire team can tell you this is one of the most coveted new kind of destinations that people want to see. They want to see Greenland. They want to see Iceland. And so um, this last a couple of years ago, we started on sailings that we said, well, let's kind of leave in July and we'll start from New York and we'll go all the way up through into Greenland and over into Iceland. Now, when you see the size of Iceland compared to Greenland, Greenland has some of the most Wizard fjords you've ever seen. They're the largest fjords in the world and some of the most untraveled to fjords. So Greenland is a really big part of, for me of what you want to see before you hit Iceland, which is absolutely amazing. But this is a you know, a 14 day cruise. And of course we include your air on it from Calgary. And so we fly to New York and home from Iceland. And what the team at South Travel can do is kind of book a pre or post package for you, or you can extend your uh, land on either side. And it, uh, I think is only $220 if you're on our air. You don't have to take our air. You can use your own points, do whatever you like. We're very flexible on how you see the cruises. But here we are in Iceland. And then we kind of do a sailing that See, wouldn't this be cool? Because a lot of our guests like to do this back-to-back -back kind of sailing. So they go from New York over to Iceland, and then they continue around the British Isles and kind of the North Cape and come back to New York. And it's a 42-day round-trip sailing. And that's next July. But it is absolutely breathtakingly beautiful, as you will see on this actual 
um, you know, uh, cruise, on every single cruise, we have what we call O-Life. And so that means Oceana Life, we give you, in addition to your air, your cruises, and your taxes, this incredible feel of like, what would you like? Would you like short versions or would you like a beverage package? Which means that, you know, it is, uh, you know, wine and beer at lunch or dinner for $20 a day, you can up it to a full premium liquor package. We at Oceana always include your soft drinks and beautiful coffees and teas and lattes and everything. You don't ever have to worry about that. Those have always been complimentary. We're the first cruise line to go green when it comes to using plastic bottles. We use a thing called Vero. Uh, water, which all the luxury hotels now have, but they're glass bottles, which you get to keep and blah, blah, blah. But the fact is, is that you have a choice on every single cruise called Olife. So you can choose. Our slogan at Oceana is your world, your way. So you can choose what you want. Um, you know, uh, instead of having everything included, we include what you would like. So what's important to you? So as we come through the Baltics and we come right into, the, I think, some of the most beautiful sailings I've seen. These are 10, 12, and 14-day cruises. And this is just an example of one of our Baltic sailings where we take you into Stockholm. And then we sail all the way up to Copenhagen. We have sailings that hit the Kiel Canal. We have sailings that do a little bit of Poland. We have sailings that are different every single time so you can merge them back to back or whatever you like. But the time that you wanna go into the Baltic and it's a very brief season is really July and August. Even that's our summer here in Western Canada. But the fact is, is if you wanna see the Baltic, this is it. So of course the famous Hermitage as we come here, these are where we park right in the heart of this harbor with these other river cruises. I have to say, that's the one thing about a small ship, and Leslie will back me up on this, is that small ships get into places that the big ships can't get into. So most ships, when it comes to St. Petersburg, dock almost an hour out, our marina and Riviera included. But when we bring the Nautica or the Insignia into Russia, we come in as a small little yacht in someone's backyard and we kind of dock right in front of the Hermitage. And this is, of course is, I think, one of the most incredible things. They say that this is only a third of all of the Hermitage's um, you know, treasures is put into the Hermitage. The other two thirds are in vaults all over the city. But the fact is, is that when you kind of come up through this, we take you on tours after hours, we take you on tours at front of the line, we take you on small tours. These will be shore excursions now um, that we're doing that will have maybe 10, 12, 14 guests with us. And it'll be a very intimate experience of walking through the Hermitage. And they say if you were to actually stand in front of each exhibit for one minute at a time and you didn't stop moving, it would take you three years just to get through this building alone. So then you kind of look into some of the other places here. This is you know, the Church of Our Savior. And this is such a beautiful city that you see in Peteroff Museum and everything is gilded gold and bridges that you cross are all gilded gold. And it's an amazing, they say if, if Russia sold one room off in the armories in Moscow, that you would add, that Russia would be the richest country in the world. I mean, this is the treasures that you, some of you will ever, you know, want to see. I always say the Baltics is kind of one mistake one of the most historic walking kind of cruise tours you could do because it is so incredibly beautiful and interesting at the same time. Now this is Tallinn, Estonia. So this is our next kind of part on the, on the cruise itinerary, but this is like a little fabled fairy tale city. You can, I, these are, you can take a short excursion in if you want. I don't know what'll happen next year, if it'll be forced to, everyone will be on, the, on a short excursion if they wanna get off the ship. We don't know that yet from countries. But right now, this is a city that you could just walk around and not even take a short excursion because it is so exquisite. And then, of course, Helsinki has some of the most incredible Second World War history. But it's also a city that you could just go and sit and, and watch, a, you know, um, sit in a cafe and watch the world go by or whatever you want to do. Berlin being one of my favorite cities in Europe, it's like Paris of, of Europe right now, is a little port that we come into called Vermundi. And when we come into Hamburg or anywhere near that, we can take a train in or we take a coach in and you stay in. And this is the Brandenburg Gates and there's the Brandenburg Concertos going and Wiener Schnitzels and beautiful stalls where you have beer and sausages and things like that. But Berlin is a city that is 
so exciting to be in. And this is one of the things I would always do on this itinerary. If I wanted shore excursions included, I would do one into Berlin. Um, so then, you know, we've got other sailings and they come maybe into Amsterdam. We have sailings that hit, you know, through into the Black Sea. This is Oslo in Norway. So we always have a little bit of a stop in Norway and it's one of the most exquisite little cities and I love Norway anyway. It's just the people are so wonderful and the air is so clean and in a way it's funny. Um, and so Amsterdam. So the, all these cities that we come in to see, they're all incredible cities in the world that people just love to travel to. And of course, London is being one of them. It's one of my favorite cities in the entire world. So as we move from the Baltics and we kind of come down, now I didn't really show you the full North Cape because there, we have one sailing that hits right up to the top of the North Cape most exciting sailing and um it's a one cruise that happens every year and it sells out every single year and so if you're interested in going to see where the sun never comes down for 18 days or you want to go see where the explorers all started up in archangel and and uh, some of the areas up there we take you right up into the very top of the north cape as far as you can get to on any ship and that's pretty exciting so we come from the north cape down through the baltics Time, now we kind of hit the, the, the uh, British Isles and then we head down into the Mediterranean. This is another sailing that has just been such an amazing success to us. And this is the British Isles and the Lowlands. And we do a lot of sailings. We have a Scottish sailing, we have Irish Celtic sailings, we have British Isles, and we've only ever kind of had one of those each. So again, small ships mean smaller itineraries, but more intensive and not very many of them. We're not a big mass market line. We're only six ships in our fleet. So we come in at the peak seasons and leave right, you know, kind of after we've done our business there. So here's the sailing from London to London, 10 days. Here's the sailing here. Here's the North Cape sailing. I forgot that I'd put it in here from Stockholm to London. This is 20 days right up to the North Cape. It's amazing. And then comes all the way back down to uh, Southampton, London. It's just absolutely beautiful. So if you want something just a bit longer, this is a great sailing. Here are the fjords. Unbelievable in Norway. They're just so gorgeous. So all these incredible things that you can do. This is one of my, I think one of my treasured sailings. I love this, is that you get a chance to have a little bit of kind of the Netherlands and the British Isles. And then you come down into Brussels and Bruges and the Havre. You can get into Paris or I would just stay in La Havre. It's beautiful. And then come down into Bordeaux and all around to Spain. Now, Canadians generally, they just want to see kind of uh, France, Italy, and um, Greece. But Spain is one of, I think, our new kind of destinations that we're starting to head into. And we've seen a lot more growth in Spain. And I think I always call it the country less traveled from here. Europeans come to it in droves, but Canadians don't ask for it. And it's one of the most beautiful countries in the entire world with its open markets and gated cities and things like that. So this is Bordeaux. And again, being on a small ship, we come and dock right at the gates and we have complimentary shuttles in and out of the city. But this is this area you can take a picnic off the ship. You can go and sit in one of the chateaus we have food tours here, we have cooking classes here, we have just historic uh, kind of short excursions, or you can just hang out and take a shuttle and then just watch the world kind of go by. We go into places like La Spezia in, um, you know, uh, in the Cinque Terre. We're one of the few small cruise lines that is still allowed in the Cinque Terre. So it's a fantastic opportunity if you want to do that. Or when we come into Monte Carlo, we dock as if we're in someone's private home. Or we come into Tarmina and we come right into the harbor and then we take you up into the city of Tarmina. So there's some really, really beautiful itineraries here. And this is a typical Mediterranean cruise of ours. This is 10 days. Uh, you can take two of those sailings and they do different itineraries, but you'll see on this map alone how incredibly intensive this itinerary is for a 10 day itinerary. We always offer you one day at sea on these incredible itineraries. And this is this beautiful sailing again, where this time, instead of coming from Amsterdam and seeing some of the British Isles, now you're starting in London and you're coming into San Malo, you know, where Christopher Columbus started his 
uh, you know, journeys back to discover Newfoundland. And then you come into Bordeaux and you come into places like, you know, La Coruña, all the beautiful areas of Spain and into um, Portugal and then all the way around to Barcelona. It's absolutely a beautiful, beautiful itinerary. Um, and these are the kinds of things that you're going to see. So here's Ponte Vecchio and Fiorenza. And you can take a transfer in or whatever you like. This is a round trip from Barcelona all the way through the Mediterranean here. And so we come all the way down to Malta and back up through to Barcelona. And it is absolutely beautiful. And of course, here's what I'm talking about when I say Spain. This is Valencia. Absolutely beautiful ancient cities, but you can just stop into these tapas bars and grab something. And if even if they don't, if you don't speak Spanish, they get it and they will bring you some of the most beautiful things you've ever had in little sharing plates. And so we actually on board the ship this last year started to say, well, we want a tapas bar too. So we have the bar um, that at nighttime up in La Reserve on Marina and Riviera, we have a tapas bar and it, it's absolutely amazing. And it's like one of the Spanish tapas bars. So you can go in for a little flight of wine and things like that. So these are really, really cool sailings. And of course, going into places like Dubrovnik or going into just typically interesting sailings. We have Greek Isles as well. We have some really, really amazing itineraries. So these are kind of the things you can look forward to with Oceana and you'll be able to see, you know, having a full day in a port and then coming back and having a choice of six restaurants. Uh, to choose from. You know, this is the kind of cool part of Oceana is because everything is so intense, but at the same time, when you come back on board, it's so relaxed because there's no crowds. This is the kind of thing that our guests come to us and they go, oh my goodness, if I'd known about Oceana before, I would have booked them. And 40% of the business right now we're seeing are people coming out from those premium lines into the smaller cruise experience. So when you see the Rialto Bridge or you come in to look at this itinerary of 20 days from Venice to Istanbul, you know, absolutely port intensive and amazing. Coming into Athens and having, we have our own private guides. We have, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this before I end and I promise I'm, I'm coming to an end here. This is the Suez Canal. One of my incredibly most beautiful itineraries I've ever seen us do is the Suez Canal. And this is a 20 day sailing from Dubai to Rome. And this happens in June of next year, beautiful time to go. We also have a beautiful Suez Canal cruise, usually in the late fall. And so this comes right through and we go into places like Aqaba, Jordan, and we go into Jerusalem. We have Luxor, the Valley of the Kings and Queens. And of course, you know, Petra here in whether you go in by donkey. So you kind of get an idea of what we do in the Med and Baltic. You can just imagine what we do in South America, in Africa, and, you know, kind of, you know, the, Australia. We do a circumnavigation right around Australia once a year for 35 days. It's amazing. All through the South Pacific, we have Tahiti cruises, everything you can imagine. And again, small ships feeling very personal and absolutely having lots of choice on board. That's the secret of Oceana. So when it comes to our shore excursions, we have regular shore excursions that you can take just for history and all that kind of stuff. We have culinary discovery tours. This is a group of 10 to 12 of our guests, and we take you into the back roads of some of the most incredibly historic culinary areas. And we teach you how to cook, how to shop, all that kind of stuff and you come back and you do a cooking lesson on board the ship and we have a galley on board our ship that you actually come in as a guest and cook it's amazing and then we decided this last couple of years we said we're going to do what we want with our locals now in canada i know we do these i don't know if you do them in calgary last but we do them in uh, vancouver where we have go local tours almost and they're not called Go Local, that's our name. But the fact is that you can hire a regular Vancouver like me and we can take you into all these different areas of Vancouver, which you wouldn't typically see as a tourist coming into the city. So we're around the world. We do things from bicycle rides to beautiful, beautiful little, you know, kind of very small, intimate crowds of just going local with a tour. I've done a few of them and they're just they're walking tours that are so amazing. Some of them bicycle tours. I've done two bicycle trips down in South America of ours. I did a fishing trip of Go Local. So it was just, I wanted to learn how to fly fish and off. I went with just a little local guide and we went into his favorite creek down in Chile somewhere. And, and uh, it was fantastic. So these are the kinds of tours we do all the time. 
if you're just a, a, a person who doesn't really is interested in food or interested in wellness or anything like that, we have almost 13 different kinds of excursions just for you. And then we have just a day that there's someone in our lobby who tells you what to do if you don't want to do anything with Oceana. So it's very, very curtailed to you. So what are we doing for you as a guest? I know we want to talk about safety. And we want to be flexible with because we, we know that there's going to be times that are changing. Our situation is very fluid. We want to inspire you to travel a little more. And we want to really show you our value. So one thing I'm going to tell you right now when it comes to health and safety is everything is changing every single day. You can go on our, our on site, you can ask Leslie and her team for this information. It's on our bottom of our web page there where it talks about the health and safety protocols. But this is a historic gathering of two of the world's biggest cruise lines. We are part of the NCLH family and Royal Caribbean family that just got together um, as two rival cruise lines and we came together in the sake of safety and so we're putting together one of the most incredibly comprehensive safety protocols uh, for cruising that'll come out. We also decided that we would start what we call a, travels, a traveler's assurance program. That is now that you can uh, cancel your cruise up to 15 days prior for any reason. Um, if you're paid in full, we, if you book today for, let's say, a North Cape sailing of next year and we drop that price two months prior to sailing, you know that you're, we're going to give you the best price. We're going to match that price. You never have to worry with Oceana. And that has always actually been from the very beginning. If you book something because they're small and that's why it's not like a big ship with hundreds of staterooms, it's only a few hundred staterooms that you have to like 600 guests as a matter of fact, that when you look and you say, this is the itinerary I want, book what you want now because the deposits are less than they've ever been. They're all the things that we're doing are so incredible. And then you can decide whether you want to cancel or not, or whether you want to continue on with the plans. So the actual side of the inspiration comes not only giving you a bit of flexibility and encouragement to travel because we know it's going to be safe again, but having that real value, and this last you know, few months, we've dropped dollar prices. We call them our historic you know, reductions, our ultimate sale. And that lasts for forever right now. So we dropped dollar prices by almost 15% and uh, on 96% on of our sailings. There's a few that were doing so well that we didn't, but the majority are. So as I said at the beginning, here you have your you know, your air, your taxes, your cruise, and then we offer you your own life as part of our Your World, Your Way promotion. So on every single cruise, you have the choice of whether you want a, a variety of shore excursions, or if you want a beverage package, which is wine and beer at lunch or dinner. And as I said at the beginning, you can up that for 20 bucks a day and have full premium liquor package. Or if you don't want to do either of those, you can just take a shipboard credit and they range between $400 and uh, $2,200. So, I mean, depending on the cruise, it's pretty amazing. So you have that on every cruise. And then, of course, for our Canadians, and I'm a true blue Canadian born in Vancouver, <laughs> um, I have to tell you, I fight like hell for all of our Canadian guests. And so we have what we call our Canadian Residence Program. And that is an extra 10% off approximately 50 sailings of ours. So you might want to have a look at that. And everybody at the South Travel team can tell you about that. And then we have our beautiful travel lady and her team. And through <laughs> what we call our ensemble travel, that's the big consortium that Leslie belongs to, is we call it our exclusive sale this month. We have prepaid gratuities on all our public sa sailings when you book a veranda and above. Now, usually the, the you know, self-travel being part of Ensemble, we have maybe 60 sailings a year that your gratuities are included. And until the end of August, if you choose to book anything, you've got your gratuities covered on every sailing if you book a veranda and above. And those are savings from anywhere from 16 to $23 per person per day. So they're really, really great value. And they're combinable with almost everything you do. And our old life, as I said, you've got the choice of whether you want liquor, you want short excursions, you just want to use it in a spa or the shop or whatever you want to do. So everybody, this is where I would say to you, you know, whether you can conjure up the thought in your mind of where you've been and maybe where you want to go from here, that's just all up to you. But we have got some of the most beautiful itineraries 
you have ever seen. So try and remember where you want to go in the future. And if there's anything we can do that keeps you kind of moving towards this next year, uh, you know, and, and there's itinerary said that you are interested in, please call this incredible team at South Travel and ask them for their, their, their opinions. They will always fight on your behalf. I know that whenever the girls have anything to sell and they need help, we are there for them. They're one of our greatest partners. And so I just want to thank Leslie for putting this together and the team and uh, see what we can do. And most of all, you know, stay healthy and stay positive. The travel business is going to come back in droves. We know that pendulum is going to swing. We know the world can't operate without travelers like yourselves and ourselves. And I know there's so many destinations I still want to see. I know it's going to come back. It's just going to take a little bit more time. And because we want it to be really strong when it does come back. So, uh, Les, would you like me to stop sharing my screen or do you want to stay here and you can continue on? Um, we can just stay here, Kathy. And okay. I think um, it, it's interesting. What I want to say to everybody is you've got all these assurances out there to enable uh, you to book and feel confident in booking. And also, as I see it, 2021 with ships taking less passengers, it's going to be a busy year. So you've really got nothing to lose if you want to go out there, have a look at the itineraries, find a little spot for you. Um, our girls can go through the deck plans and make sure that you're in the best possible position for you and, uh, and go out there and see the world. I can't wait. Yes. Come back. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I, you know, yeah. I do think that there, the, what you were saying is the deck plans are really important too. You know, mm -hmm. there's so, we, we don't have very many inside staterooms because we're not a cruise line that sells a lot of inside staterooms. Most of our staterooms are veranda. All of our mm -hmm. staterooms have the most beautiful beds. They're called prestige tranquility beds. People now actually buy them. They're so beautiful. Um, they, it, it was one of the things when Oceana first started, I was over at Crystal and I'll never forget people would say, you know, oh, this is one of the, the greatest, uh, you know, kind of jokes about Oceana was the fact that their shore excursions when they first started were, had to run operate late because people just wouldn't get out of those beds. <laughs> and so their frette sheets are absolutely beautiful. Everything we do on board Bulgari, Bulgari toiletries a refrigerator mm -hmm. in every room. We don't charge for soft drinks. You can walk and get a latte anytime or a London fog or whatever you want to do. It's all the things that I always say, Leslie, that are really interesting when I look at, at cruising now is that I don't necessarily myself in my 60s need everything included. I couldn't drink that much and I don't want to have short excursions at right. me all the time. I would feel like I'm missing out on something. But what I think the balance that Oceana got right is that we include the things that are really important to people, like the, mm -hmm. the transfers in the cities and the, you know, having the choice if I want short excursions, I have, you know, eight or 10 or 12 or whatever I want, um, that I have a choice if I want liquor and I might not, maybe I kind of just want to have a ship bottle of champagne when I want it, or I want a yes. martini when I want it. So those are the kind of things that we include because we want it to be your world, your way, but still have this incredible feeling on board the ship. So when you come on board, you are welcomed and you are part of a, our Oceana family. And as I say, 40% of our business right now is brand new to Oceana because it is on a smaller cruise line. So come and join us. Exactly. Become part yes. of our family. <laughs> Yes, I think that would be wonderful. Uh, small is the is the way to go, I think, going forward. Not to say that there's uh, anything wrong with the bigger cruise ships. I'm no, sure they're beautiful. We'll be doing their due diligence as well. But I also think as well with 2020, I kind of like to call it the lost year. Yeah. Once you start getting into our generation, uh, time is really important, and we want to, we've worked hard all of our lives. Now we want to go out and see these amazing places, but we don't want to hassle doing it. We don't want to be driving cars and staying in Airbnbs. We want somebody else to do the whole thing for us and make it wonderful. And I can't think of a better way to do it than with Oceana. Thank you so much, Kathy. This has been amazing. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you all for coming on. It's been wonderful. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks you for everything you do, Leslie and the girls. Safe. You guys are amazing. Thank you so oh. much, everybody. Thanks so much, Kathy. Stay well. Yeah, you too. Ciao. Bye.